A TV legend returns to Drury. Our campus welcomes homes its heroes, and we have a short film that will make you wonder, what are they teaching college students these days? This is not just any college TV show. This is DUTV. From the Carol Lambert Studios at Drury University, this is DUTV. Welcome back to DUTV. I'm John Aaron Campbell, and how else do you welcome back the swim, dive, and men's basketball team from national championships than with a parade? Members of all three sports were honored recently in a parade of champions that started in downtown Springfield and ended at the DU Fountains. The Drury community showed up to cheer on our student athletes along Drury Lane. The swim team is accustomed to such praise after emerging as the strongest dynasty ever in Division II swimming. Hats off to the coach, Brian Reynolds, who is worthy of all the praise coming his way. For the men's basketball team, it was their second national championship, the first coming in 1979. And speaking of basketball, a former player returned to campus recently, but chances are you know him for a completely different reason. Bob Barker came back to Drury for the unveiling of a trophy case in his honor. Barker is donating his Lifetime Achievement Award and several others for his years in the television as the host of The Price is Right. You can see the trophy case for yourself in the lobby of Shoemaker <laughs> Communication Center. Bob Barker graduated from Drury in 1947 with a degree in economics. Barker was a member of the men's basketball team in Sigma Nu fraternity. But, of course, Bob Barker will always be known to the world as the host of The Price is Right. Generations of America's youth grew up with the show, and now, as Emily Dykus reports, a version of the show has come to campus. If you want to put on a show, you got to cover your bases. Test the games. The wheel. Make sure you have all of the prizes. Ready, you look good. And help the host with his confidence. John George, come on down. <laughs> now, you're ready for a show. And the actual retail price is? 97 cents. Welcome to the jury version of The Price is Right. <laughs> Organizers saw a similar event for college students at a Nebraska convention last fall. Taylor, what are we bidding for? Beef jerky. <laughs> and decided to make it their own. And we thought, well, Bob Barker graduated from here. We need to have the prices right. So we kind of took their idea and ran with it. And so now, it's a reality. Only thing missing is a crowd. Although the attendance was not very high, we believe that the people really enjoyed it and it'll be something we'll do again with hopefully more attendance and not as much going on like this. Residence Life Association is a student group on campus that holds about eight events a year. Two seventy-five. Actual retail price is five sixty-eight. But Brady Nelson sure had fun. So the way this works is you all put your name in the bucket. He got to play the legend himself. I was Bob Barker. <laughs> it, it was it was a good time. It was exhilarating. I feel honored to get to be that part of Bob Barker. This is Emily Dykus reminding you to have your pets spayed and neutered. They are small. They make loud, irritating sounds and are played by millions of people. You probably already guessed. Our next story is about ukuleles. Producer Christine Bass recently attended a rehearsal of the D-Ukes. Hot coffee, a warm fireplace, and... Ukuleles. We call ourselves D. Ukes. We are the ukulele club of Drury University. D. U. X. <laughs> Dr. Maxson started the group out of his love for the ukulele. <laughs> I guess my favorite thing is to come and see what songs they have brought to sing.
can find them less than a mile from Drury Campus at The Hub, a coffee and bicycle shop. Drury student Christine West just started three weeks ago, but she's already become an integral part of the group. I actually didn't have a ukulele when I first started coming, and so he let me borrow his, and I still, this is his ukulele that I'm borrowing right now. So, he's great, and he really wants us to learn and develop our skills. Christine Bass, DUTV. While DUX is a great way to meet new people, studies have shown that video games bring even more people together. Students in the drafting lab bring new meaning to the word hands-on gaming. Our grandparents danced. Our parents hung out at the local burger shop. So what is it that youth today are doing with their free time? I love video games. I like that it's just like a mind-numbing thing and after coming to all these classes and everything and it, being in the D-Lab, that's kind of what I need it for. What's the third one? Uh, I think the thing is, is that people actually love playing with Mitch because he, he, is, he, he's, he gets so passionate about the game. It's always an interesting time when you play games with Mitch because A, he's either the happiest of little boys you'll ever see opening a Christmas present on Christmas morning or he is a raging Lucifer being born into hell. Some people, like one and a half people, don't like playing video games with me because I get a little competitive. We got this. Hey, we got this. Eye contact. We will win. According to ABCNews.com, the average gamer spends 5 to 10 hours a week playing video games. Sometimes I'll be on a kick, I'll play like 20 hours, probably close to 30. A couple hours a week, I'd say. 8 to 10 at least? 3 hours maybe. Close to 9 to 10 hours a week. It's such a, it's such a horrible commodity, just because, I mean, it's there and I mean, here's the positives to it, you know. I feel like if you give them a chance, everybody can enjoy video games. Um, and the, the drafting lab video games have kind of given everybody a chance to, to get along and, and get to know each other a little better and just have great, fun moments with each other, you know. Aaron Campbell, DUTV. More than 68% of Americans play video games. When we come back, we'll meet Drury's professor of sculpture and see his vision for the future of architecture. From the beautiful campus of Drury University in Springfield, Missouri, you are watching DUTV. Can we pause it for a second? Okay. Thanks. Hey, where are you going? I need to pass gas. What's well, it's cool. You can do it here. <laughs> no way. Go ahead. I don't care. Look, if I pass gas in here, it's going to be toxic, and it could linger for hours, maybe days. Is that what you want? No. Be right back. Secondhand smoke contains hydrogen cyanide and other deadly gases. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. We want to publish what's on your mind. And I think really that's the most important part is we can't do our job without every student on this campus. That, I think that's what makes our paper. I mean, it's not us. I mean, we do the technical work, but really it's the students and the faculty and the staff, the entire jury community that makes the paper what it is.
think it's absolutely essential to have basic shooting and editing skills. Welcome. As we usher in the winter season. I mean, every business has a website and almost every website wants to have a video. Turn that off. Watch this. Ah, soft, pretty light. The only real way to learn this business is to get out and do it. Be aggressive, flip it open. You have to shoot and edit a video. Get critiqued for that video, and then go shoot and edit another one. Repetition is the best way to learn this business. To be really good at video, you have to get personal attention. And if I didn't have them every Tuesday and Thursday, like on my back, like, oh no, you're not getting enough natural sound, and like, let me see that scene again, and come into the editing bay tonight and I'll work with you, then I would have never been half decent at it. It's about the faces. You have the ability to not only put a quality video together, but one that looks and sounds professional. I'm Krista Scott, a Drury senior from Hannibal, Missouri, and you're watching DUTV. Learn more about our studio and television production programs at Drury University on our Facebook page. Search DUTV. He's a native of Arkansas, plays the blues, loves the Razorbacks, and he's exploring the ever-changing world of art and architecture. Dylan Corbett brings us a story of sculpture professor Joseph Blaine Wizenhunt. Architecture and art. While many people don't see the connection, jury professor Blaine Wizenhunt does. Art and architecture have always had a very common and shared language and, and sort of cultural role. It's just my specific work until maybe six or seven years ago didn't necessarily weave them together. But adjust to keep you on the line. Though trained as a sculptor, Blaine considers himself to be a post-media artist whose work is not reliant on a specific medium, discipline, or style. I don't think many of us think of ourselves as a painter or a sculptor or, or, or some disciplinary description. Uh, most contemporary artists uh, work in a variety of media. To show his interest in architecture and material structure, his gallery Rhizome was on display at the Pool Art Center. There's uh, everything you could think of from digital type of art to uh, physical solid to um, hanging painting, digital um, recreation of the pictures. I didn't just sit down and say, um, oh, I have a show. Here are the things that um, I have ready for it or whatever, or here are a bunch of separate things that I'll just throw in there. Instead, uh, I tried to look at the various stages of the projects I had going on and tried to look at the ones that um, kind of wove together an interesting uh, narrative of connection. He's an incredible sculpture artist, and I was uh, expecting that, but I wasn't expecting um, the digital and the recreations that I saw. As far as his architecture, expect his firm, Rhizome Architecture and Design, to begin construction plans throughout the Ozarks. Design and architecture has, has a chance to resonate in the community and, and to the individual more. To view Blaine's portfolio and his upcoming work, you can visit his website at www.blainewizenhunt.net. Dylan Corbett, DUTV. Here's a problem for you graduating seniors. You've amassed a mountain of stuff, crap to be more precise, and you can't take it all with you when you graduate. So what do you do with all that stuff? Phoebe Mae Hicks has the answer. We had a garage sale. It was my first ever garage sale, and it was pretty successful, if I do say so myself. Yeah, rid of a lot of clothing that I did not need. There was even lemonade made by a special guest. It's enough. Try that. What do you think? Ooh, not good. Mmm, that's good lemonade. I was telling him because I am a graduating senior. It's a great way to get rid of all the stuff that I don't need anymore because I've collected way too many things. You're selling? So I can move away from Drury, sadly, and um, start my real life, my grown-up life, and I do not need all this junk. Someone else wanted it. 
a lot of great buys that were really cheap and useful. Don't worry if you missed out on the yard sale this time. We're going to try to do it in the FSC circle soon, just so we can get more uh, foot traffic. Phoebe Hicks, reporting for DUTV. If you miss the yard sale, you can still find the same worthless items somewhere on Craigslist. If you didn't catch the intro to that story, it was produced by Phoebe May Hicks. Now, anyone with a name like Phoebe May has to be from a rural part of the world, and Phoebe May is no exception to that rule. This talented young video producer hails from Morrisville, Missouri, an area rich in agriculture. So, as you might have guessed, here's a farming story from Phoebe May Hicks. The subject? Well, goats, of course. Charge! The Hutton Valley Farm is a story of a hobby that turned into a full-time job for the Thomas family. Hutton Valley was where I was born, and I uh, returned to the farm after retiring. The farm is currently home to 110 goats, keeping the Thomas family busy and in need of helpers. I want to pizza baby goat. Well, how, what's it like to live on a goat farm and have grandkids? Well, there's just no words to describe it, actually. Get out! Look out, there's chicken in the goat house. <laughs> And grandkids are wonderful, and they're a lot like baby goats sometimes, too. Okay, goats. Time to go to bed. Big news recently for media majors like myself here at Drury University. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held for the Carol Lambert Studios. Ms. Lambert cut the ribbon herself to officially open our four camera HD TV studios. Lambert is a DU alum whose gift of Drury made the new studio possible. A big thanks to Carol and SGA for making it all possible. Not all of our multimedia majors do what I'm doing now, anchoring a show. Many of them like to try their hand at producing movies and short films. Here's one example from Will Stone. A warning to our viewers, this project contains mindless, gratuitous violence and really bad acting by Will Stone. <laughs> What's going on? I have some grave news regarding your cousin Carl. He's been taken captive. Who are you? He is as good as dead. No, you're welcome for the money. Oh! Sarah, Bombardier merely told me that someone took Carl. Well, I really, I don't care. You're not ever going to find him. No, don't say that to me! I'm going to have to find him. Well, acting. But your cousin could be over two miles away. Two miles away? I just want to play for him, man. You think that's gonna stop me from getting my cousin while you're wrong? Blakey for Carl, are you? Well, so away. Brought your dingoes, cause you're gonna need them. Find his cousin. I shall do my best. 
Ahead in the head, but I lost it. We must stop them at all costs. And finally, we end this episode of DUTV with a segment featuring students from this semester's Video 1 class as they attempt to do station IDs for DUTV. I'm John Aaron Campbell. Enjoy. Mm. I'll wait. <laughs> I'm Jalen Ellison from... Uh... I'm Krista Scott, a jury senior from Hannibal, Missouri, and dang it, my bangs are in my way. Hi, I'm... <laughs> I'm Phoebe Hicks, a jury junior. Shoot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caleb Mabe, a jury freshman from Nixon, Missouri. Hi, I'm Caleb Mabe, a jury sophomore from Nixon, Missouri. Hi, I'm Caitlin Yeager from Wagner... Uh, I'm Jalen Ellison, a jury junior studying multimedia and journalism and you're from Forsyth, Missouri, and you're watching DU TV. Right. We're watching DU TV. <laughs> it's too much. I'm Jalen Ellison, jury. And you're watching DU TV. <laughs> I knew I was going to forget this. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick McCarthy. <laughs> Please have that in the background. <laughs> okay. I'm Krista Scott. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do it again. 